Hello everyone and welcome back to the revisionary classes on financial management and here in this class we are beginning with long term financing decisions. Long term financing decisions means your objective is to arrange funds on a long term basis. For this purpose you should understand one thing very well that what is your ultimate objective in doing so. Your ultimate objective is to design an optimal capital structure. Now, what is an optimal capital structure? I'll tell you in a while. But when you are talking about designing a capital structure, what are the various sources of long term financing? There are typically four different sources of long term financing debt, which includes all long term borrowings, issuing debentures, issuing bonds on a long term basis. Then second is preferences. Third is equity shares. Fourth is retained earnings. Now these are the four different sources of long term funds and your objective is to design an optimal capital structure. Now what is the meaning of optimal capital structure? Optimal capital structure has been defined in two different ways. Number one, it is such a capital structure which can maximize the rate of return for the equity shareholders. Alternatively, it has been defined as an optimal capital structure is such a capital structure which can minimize the overall cost of capital. So either way, you will land up at the same objective. Either you try to minimize your overall cost of capital. The moment you try to do that, the rate of return for the equity shareholders will enhance automatically. So either way, you talk about optimal capital structure you are going to discuss various things within this chapter long term financing decisions. You are going to talk about leverages. You are going to talk about capital structure decisions. You are going to talk about cost of capital, marginal cost of capital, weighted average cost of capital. All these components will come under this heading long term financing decisions. So we will be splitting the whole discussion into various parts. And let us begin our discussion over here with the basic fundamental of long term financing decisions. Now over here you need to understand what is the meaning of shareholders funds and what is the meaning of capital employed. These terminologies should be very very clear to all of you. Now when I talk about shareholders funds it includes three components preference shares, equity shares and retained earnings. On the other side all types of long term borrowings which are classified as one single heading that is debt. So debt plus shareholders fund will give you total capital employed. In simple words when I talk about capital employed it is aggregate of these four components which are sources of long term funds. Now you have understood what are different sources of long term funds. You have also understood what is the ultimate objective that is designing the optimal capital structure and now what are various factors that can influence your decision one could be the interrelationship between risk and returns and another could be your cost of capital so risk and return relationship and cost of capital are the two important factors that will influence your decision so let us do one thing let us write some important notes about this and as i told you these classes are purely revisionary classes you want to know the details of all of these concepts I will be giving various video links in the description of this same video where you can find the detailed concept coverage. So whichever point you find yourself little confused and you want to know the things in details just click the link of the relevant video everything has been provided at your disposal for your comfort just prepare it well. Now. When I'm giving you notes, I may not be giving you sufficient time to note down the same. Wherever you want to write down the notes, please pause the video, write down the notes and then you can resume the video again. So I may keep on instructing you to write the notes, but you know what you have to do eventually. So when you write this heading, you write under this heading long term financing decisions that there are four different sources of long term financing. One is debt, one is preference share, one is equity shares and one is retained earnings. The aggregate of the above four factors is known as total capital employed. Total capital employed equals to debt plus shareholders funds. Debt represents all long term borrowings including debentures and bonds issued by the company. After writing this much let us move ahead and continue writing further. Shareholders funds 
it includes three components that is preference shares plus equity shares plus retained earnings the objective of the company is to design optimal capital structure in other words to design best possible mix of four sources of long term finance an optimal capital structure is such a capital structure which can maximize the rate of return for equity shareholders or an optimal capital structure is such a capital structure that can minimize the overall cost of capital let us now look into how an entity prepares its income statement so you can begin with sales from sales you subtract variable cost you arrive at something known as contribution from contribution when you subtract cash operating fixed cost so understand the meaning of cash operating fixed cost first of all these are operating fixed cost when i say operating fixed cost means it does not include interest secondly it is cash operating fixed cost means it does not include any non cash expense as well that means non cash and non operating expenses are not considered over here and therefore the profit that you get after this will be ebitda ebitda that is earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization now what you will do is you will subtract depreciation and amortization which are non cash expenses and what you now get is ebit that is earnings before interest and tax also known as operating profit of the company once you get operating profit what you do next is begin with operating profit and this operating profit is nothing but earnings before interest and tax from that you subtract interest to arrive at ebt that is earnings before tax or you can also call it profit before tax from that you subtract the amount of tax and what you get is profit after tax from profit after tax which is available to shareholders you will obviously first pay off the preference dividend and then the earnings which are remaining will be considered as earnings available to equity shareholders earnings available to equity shareholders in short eat esh these are available only for equity shareholders distribution now when these earnings are divided by the number of equity shares what you end up with is earnings per share in short eps alternatively if you consider earnings available to equity shareholders and from that you subtract equity dividend you will be getting the amount of retained earnings so let me show you even that and give you some full forms over here ebit stands for earnings before interest and tax ebt stands for earnings before tax pat stands for profit after tax eat esh is earnings available to equity shareholders eps is nothing but earnings per share i told you some time back that when you subtract the equity dividend from earnings available to equity shareholders what you will end up getting is the amount of retained earnings all right friends let us move ahead and now talk about leverages now when we talk about leverages let me first draw your attention to business risk business risk is classified into two categories one is operating risk and another is financial risk the risk arising in the basic business operation is considered as operating risk of the business and the risk arising in the business because of borrowings that is known as financial risk so if you could figure out the entire income statement that we have seen some time back from sales what all we are subtracting use your common sense over here from sales we are first subtracting variable cost then we are subtracting fixed cost then we are subtracting component of interest then we subtract tax and lastly we subtract preference dividend now understand one thing five factors we are subtracting from sales whatever you are subtracting from sales is basically your outflow it is basically your cost or some kind of distribution now you have to look into which component of cost or distribution is creating risk upon you first component that you subtract from sales was variable cost variable cost will never create any risk why because if there are no sales there will be no variable cost if there are less amount of sales achieved there will be lesser amount of variable cost so variable cost is a cost that will vary with the volume of sales or with the sales value but it will have no risk impact because i am telling you if you are not having any sales there will be no variable cost also on the other side 
the nature of fixed cost is what whether you make sales or not fixed cost will be incurred so fixed cost becomes the first component of risk this fixed cost which is excluding interest will be considered as operational fixed cost and the risk arising because of existence of this operational fixed cost is known as operating risk thereafter the next component is interest even interest on debt is a risky element why because whether you are earning profit or not it does not matter you have to pay interest but after subtracting interest when you arrive at ebt that is earnings before tax tax will be subtracted after that but tax will arise only when you earn profit correct no profit means no tax that means tax cannot become a risky element after tax you will subtract the next and last component as preference dividend when you are subtracting preference dividend to arrive at equity shareholders earnings preference dividend is not a fixed charge but it is a distribution of profit if profit is not there no distribution will happen as a result there are only two elements of outflows which are going to create risk one is the operating fixed cost which creates operating risk upon the business and another is the interest cost which will create financial risk so what is the cause of operating risk in any business existence of fixed cost and what is the cause of financial risk in any business it is basically the financial leverage that means borrowing of funds becomes the risky element borrowings of funds creates financial risk because it puts a burden of interest upon the entity then whether the entity is earning profit or not it will have to pay that much amount of interest what it has committed so let us do one thing let us write some notes over here and then we shall move ahead so based on what we have just discussed you may write under the heading leverages business risk can be classified into following that is operating risk and financial risk operating risk arises because of existence of fixed operating cost whereas financial risk arises because of existence of debt in the capital structure in other words financial risk arises because of existence of interest cost moving ahead we would say operating risk is measured by a ratio called degree of operating leverage that is dol it is measured by taking contribution divided by ebit higher the degree of operating leverage higher will be the operating risk financial risk is measured by a ratio called degree of financial leverage that is dfl so dfl is basically ebit divided by ebt higher the dfl higher will be the financial risk now friends what i have done in my concept videos i have given detailed discussion on concepts of leverages here for your understanding i'll just give you one simple point use your simple common sense so that you don't have to mug up this thing as a formula now what happens when you are talking about degree of operating leverage imagine that in your income statement where does fixed cost come the item just prior to fixed cost is contribution and item immediately after all operating fixed cost is ebit so if you consider fixed cost as one of the item of risk item prior to that is contribution and item after that is ebit so when you take the ratio of contribution and ebit it will give you degree of operating leverage if this ratio is smaller it indicates the burden of fixed cost is less because there is no significant difference between contribution and ebit if the amount of fixed cost is very small however on a relative basis if the amount of fixed cost is substantially higher what will happen significant amount of contribution will be utilized towards the fixed cost and very small amount will be left over as ebit in that case contribution divided by ebit will be a very high degree of ratio and that will indicate high operating risk exactly same way when you are observing your income statement after ebit the next component is interest and ebit minus interest will give you ebt so when you find that interest is creating that risk item prior to that is ebit and item after that is ebt so ebit divided by ebt will give you degree of financial leverage and higher the degree of financial leverage higher will be the financial risk in the business so let us move ahead and continue writing further and once you have understood dol and dfl you can write 
the overall risk in the business which is combination of operating risk and financial risk is measured by a ratio called degree of combined leverage that is DCL and DCL is contribution divided by EBT. So you should know one thing very well that DCL is a product of DOL and DFL. What I mean to say is DCL can be determined by multiplying DOL and DFL. Once you have understood this much the next point is all about establishing interrelationship of leverages with other factors. Friends in my concept videos I have given detailed discussion on this part as well. So here you understand this relationship percentage increase in EBIT or you can say percentage changes in EBIT will be equal to percentage increase in contribution or percentage change in contribution multiplied by DOL and by that logic if you want to determine DOL it will be percentage increase in EBIT divided by percentage increase in contribution. So here the word increase has been considered assuming that from one level to the other level the amount of contribution and EBIT are increasing. If there is a decrease still the same phenomena will apply. Similarly percentage increase in EBT equals to percentage increase in EBIT multiplied by DFL and through this if you want to determine DFL it will be percentage increase in EBT divided by percentage increase in EBIT. Similarly percentage increase in EBT can also be worked out as percentage increase in contribution multiplied by degree of combined leverage that is DCL and through this if you want to determine the value of DCL it will be percentage increase in EBT divided by percentage increase in contribution. I am telling you again the interrelationship logically if you want to understand in details please watch my concept video in relation to the same point. Moving ahead we would say it is considered that overall risk is a combined effect of operating risk and financial risk and we have already talked about this fact that DCL is a product of DOL and DFL. Let us see what will happen when you multiply DOL and DFL. DOL is basically contribution divided by EBIT and DFL is EBIT divided by EBT. EBIT is getting cancelled out and you finally get to know that DOL into DFL will be contribution divided by EBT. In other words DOL into DFL is giving you DCL that is degree of combined leverage. Please refer question number 2 and question number 3 from regular class videos for developing complete understanding about these concepts.